Hello and welcome to another Yukon Q Center video. This video is about the ratio test for proving convergence or divergence of infinite series. In this video, I'm going to show you the definition of the ratio test, I'm going to explain why the ratio test works, and I'm going to apply the test to two examples. First, let's take a look at the definition. What this is saying is, if we had some infinite series, and we then took the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a of n plus 1 divided by a of n, then we're going to get some limit L. If the value of the limit happens to be less than 1, then the series is absolutely convergent and therefore convergent. If the value of the limit L happens to be greater than 1, then the series diverges. Finally, if the value of the limit happens to equal 1, then the ratio test is inconclusive, meaning you need to use some sort of other test to figure out if the series converges or diverges. Now that you know what the definition is, let's take a look at why this definition is true. First, let's evaluate the claim that says, if the value of L is less than 1, then the series is absolutely convergent and therefore convergent. Given the fact that we're assuming L is less than 1, there exists some number r such that we could sandwich r in between l and 1. And that's true because numbers are infinite. So for example, let's suppose our l was equal to 0 0.8. I could choose r to be, for example, 0 0.9. Because 0 0.9 is sandwiched in between 0 0.8 and 1. Now here's why this is important. Since the limit as n goes to infinity is l, and we're assuming that l is less than r, then after a certain term, it has to be true that this ratio is less than r, just like how l is less than r. Notice that I can multiply both sides of this inequality by a n to get this inequality. And what this inequality is saying is a certain term in the series is less than the previous term multiplied by r. I can repeat this. This term is less than the previous term times r, and I could repeat this forever and ever. To generalize this, I'm going to write it this way. And notice that this k matches with this k. Let's analyze this inequality further. Since this inequality holds true for these two sequences, it also has to be true that this inequality holds for the series corresponding to those sequences. Now, this series right over here should look familiar. And I say that because it is in the form of a geometric series. And because we know that r is less than 1, then logically, the absolute value of r is between 0 and 1. And what that means for a geometric series is that it converges. Now, we could use the comparison test to say, because the greater of these two series converges, the smaller of these two series also has to converge. And what's really nice about this result is, if the series absolute value of a of n plus k converges, so does the series absolute value of a n because this series right here is just this series missing a few of its terms. So in conclusion, if the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a of n plus 1 divided by a of n happens to be less than 1, then by the ratio test, the series is absolutely convergent and therefore convergent. Now let's evaluate the claim that says, if the value of l is greater than 1, then the series diverges. If the value of L is greater than 1, then what that has to mean is, after a certain term, we could take this ratio, multiply both sides by the absolute value of an, and get this. And what this is saying is, a certain term in the sequence is greater than whatever the previous term is. What that means is, after a certain term, this sequence is always increasing. And if you think back to the divergence test, what that says is, if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of a sequence, and it doesn't equal 0, in this case it would go to infinity, then you could conclude that the series diverges. Now we need to be careful here because just because the absolute value of a series 
diverges, that doesn't necessarily mean that the regular version of the series diverges as well. After all, the regular series could have some negative terms in it. But even if we had something like that going on, let's say we have an alternating series that looks like this. Notice even then, the magnitude of each of the terms are getting further and further away from zero. So what that means is, if we took the limit of the sequence without taking its absolute value, we could still safely conclude that the limit is not going to be equal to zero. And again, by the divergence test, that has to mean the series corresponding to the sequence also diverges. To show you why it is that the ratio test is inconclusive if the value of L equals 1, Let's look at a couple different series. If you consider the series 1 divided by n squared, we know that's convergent because the p-series test referenced here says, if the p-value is greater than 1, then the series converges. In contrast, if you consider the series 1 divided by n, this diverges by the p-series test because its p-value equals 1. Now, if we were to do this limit here with each of the series, notice that both times we get 1. For the convergent series, whose work I have written out in pink, I simplify my work here. I get rid of the absolute value because anything squared is positive anyways. I also expanded out the denominator here to then see that the degree in the numerator is the same as the degree in the denominator. So the limit is just the ratio of the leading coefficients. In this case, 1 divided by 1 gives me 1. As for the divergent series, whose work I have here in green, Notice, by the same reasoning, I see that the degree in the numerator is the same as the degree in the denominator, so the limit is just 1 divided by 1, which equals 1. And this should convince you that it is possible for a convergent series to get this limit to be equal to 1, and it's also possible for a divergent series to get this limit to be equal to 1. So that is why you can't use the ratio test to confirm that a series diverges or converges if the value of the limit is 1. Now let's apply the ratio test to an example. The first thing that you have to do if you want to use the ratio test is to define your sequence an as well as your sequence an plus 1. Your sequence an is always the sequence that's given to you, whereas your sequence an plus 1 is the sequence an where what you do is you replace every n with n plus 1. Now I realize that this work here may be confusing, so let me break this down to you bit by bit. First, let's take a look at the numerator. What I did was I stated that n plus 1 factorial is equivalent to n plus 1 times n factorial. The reason why I could do this is because if you think about a number factorial, 5 factorial for example, notice how I could call it 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I could also call it 5 times 4 factorial where what I did was I took the first term times the next term factorial. Just like how I could do this with numbers, I could do this with expressions. Then what I did to the numerator was I distributed the exponent 2. Now as for the denominator, first remember order of operations. I need to distribute this 2 before I do anything with the brackets. Now that I have this, I could take a very similar idea that I have here. Think about it like, instead of doing 5 factorial equals 5 times 4 factorial, similarly, I could call this 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. So I took the first two terms of the factorial, and I'm multiplying it by the third term factorial. Now what we got to do is to find our limit. n goes to infinity absolute value of a of n plus 1 divided by a n. Now when you're using the ratio test, it's almost a given that you're going to be doing a fraction divided by a fraction, which I realize could be very confusing. So I prefer to evaluate this limit using this notation instead. And what I find is using this notation is a lot easier because you can then see what terms cancel out. As you remember from elementary school, Dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. And here you could very clearly see that the n factorial squareds cancel out, as well as the two n factorials. 
And this is very nice, because now we've eliminated all of our factorials, so now we have ourselves a simple rational expression. I expand out both the numerator and the denominator, so I could clearly see that the numerator's degree is the same as the denominator's degree. And what that means is the limit is just the ratio of the leading coefficients, which in this case is 1 divided by 4. And since the value of L is less than 1, then this series here is absolutely convergent and therefore convergent by the ratio test. Now let's use the ratio test for a series that diverges. For this series here, again, just like in example 1, before I do anything else, I set my given sequence to be an. And notice what I did was, I used the law of exponents to change the denominator so I could have as many factors as possible. That's going to help me later on in my work when I'm canceling out common terms. Again, my sequence a n plus 1 is what I get when I replace every n in the sequence a n with n plus 1. And just like what I did here, I'm using a couple laws of exponents to manipulate this fraction so that I have as many factors as possible. I go through the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a of n plus 1 divided by a of n. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So you could see here, what's going to cancel out is the 9 raised to n, as well as the negative 2 raised to n. So then with what's left over, I multiply across the numerator and denominator to get this. I distribute the 4 into the denominator, so then I could see that the degree in the numerator is the same as the degree in the denominator. That means the limit is the ratio of the leading coefficients, and once I take the absolute value and reduce this fraction, I end up with 9 divided by 2, which is of course greater than 1, so that confirms by using the ratio test that this series diverges. I would like to conclude this video with a brief summary, as well as some strategies for effectively using the ratio test. The ratio test says that if this limit gives you a value that is less than 1, then the series absolutely converges, which means it converges. If the value of the limit is greater than 1, the series diverges, and if the value is equal to 1, then the ratio test is inconclusive. As for my strategies, consider using the ratio test if the series has a lot of exponents and or factorials. As you saw with the first example and the second example, I was able to manipulate my an as well as my an plus 1 to be able to cancel out a lot of common terms. Hence, strategy number 3. Finally, if the limit happens to equal 1, choose some other test, because the ratio test won't be able to conclude whether or not the series converges or diverges.